Welcome to the Josh Heisman Podcast. We are on episode 38 with Mark Cook, and Mark Cook is here. And I, I'm telling you what, the way that I was introduced to this guy is really cool. I get an email from a friend of his, and he's talking about this wonderful devotion that Mark has written that is called The First Hour, Unleash God's Power. And we got the books in the mail at the church, and we started looking through them in the office, and immediately I realized I got to talk to this guy because God has done an awesome work in your life. But first, before we get into any of this stuff, let me just say hello to you. Thank you so much, Mark Cook, coming on in here. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for having me. You're in for a surprise. I'm, we're, look, I'm raw and real, so yeah, I'll, I'll, tr- I'll try to keep my uh, you know ADD down to a minimal here, and we'll just have some fun. But but thanks for having me, and and uh, I'm excited to be here. Well, you're not as excited as me because. You are involved and have been involved in some of the things that I love most, which is movies. I love reading God's word. I love culture and what's going on as far as just entertainment and things like that, that you have been involved in. And so just reading your story of how this book came about, but even the things that you have been involved in, in your life is, is such a a cool testimony that I was like, we got to talk about this stuff. Yeah. I tell you, you're on 38 episode. I always tell people I'm only 38 years old. This right here is, is <laughs> going on 90. You know, the Hollywood days got the best of me, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been a crazy ride. And as I look back and I was talking to you earlier saying, you know, I, I didn't w- wake up one morning 15 years ago and say, I think I'm going to do a 30 day devotional for men. <laughs> you know, this, I mean, my walk was up, down, up, down. We'll get into that. And, and this book is just something that, that God woke me up at 5.55 in the morning. And being a filmmaker, you know, I'm usually going to go to bed till 2 o'clock. Right. And just over and over in my mind, as we know, that's how the Holy Spirit speaks to us, our thoughts. Get up, give me your first hour, 30 minutes of prayer, 30 minutes of reading my word, and I'm going to rock your world. And at this time, I was a baby Christian. And I didn't know about spiritual warfare, and I didn't know about a lot of things, you know. So what's interesting is I've, I've seen the transformation, and it's not a book you read, and that's why men really love it. Because they're saying, oh, it's, you know, I got another book, I got another book, and it's a checkoff list, mm-hmm. you know, to get you into the real book, which is the Word of God. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm excited to be here, and I'll, I'll give you some of the good, bad, and the ugly of Hollywood, if that's what you want to start well, with. Well, I'm... I. We could start with that. I'm really curious because it, let me just tell you this. First off, you're the first Hollywood producer I've ever met. Okay. And then second off, uh, I didn't know there were Christian Hollywood producers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so why don't you tell me more about this? Yeah. It's, uh, well, let me give you background. I, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and I got a degree in automotive marketing, which is a two-year associate's degree. It took me three years to get because even back when I was younger, I had to, you take this energy and you put it in the wrong direction and there's nothing good about it. Mm. Okay. So, you know, I majored in beer drinking and, and chasing girls. It took me three years to get an associate's degree in automotive marketing, but I always had this dream of becoming a Hollywood producer. Mm. Now, as I look back, I just see, you know, God's got a calling for each one, a, a distinct calling for each one of our lives. And I call it DNA. I, by the way, we'll talk more about it, but I get, now I get woke up at three in the morning and Holy Spirit gives me these three letter acronyms and DNA, DNA. Like we all have a divine natural assignment mm. and a divine natural ability. And, you know, we're all unique. And as I look back at my journey, I realized I was supposed to be in film. This is something. Because what would a guy from Detroit Going into the automotive business, say, I want to go to Hollywood and become a producer. What's mm-hmm. the chances? I mean, I didn't go to film school. I didn't do this. It was this burning desire, um, and I don't even know why. And it wasn't to be a director or a writer or an actor. Um, it's just I want to produce movies. And I actually read a book called The Real Power, R-E-E-L, and it's how to become a Hollywood producer. Mm. And there's only three ways. Have the money to finance a film, didn't have it. Write a great script, I got a D in English. You know, my run-on <laughs> sentences are crazy. Uh-huh. Or, or option a book that everybody wants. And uh, I ended up optioning a book called The God Project. Isn't that interesting? Are and you it, a believer at this point? Oh, no. or are you, no, well, okay. see, here's the thing. I've always been a believer, and I was raised Catholic, okay? So my dad, who was an amazing father, 
Um, I lost him at a, a very young age. I was 26. He was 51. And but so we always went to Christmas and Easter. So it's a typical. Yeah, so I was a, I was right. I was a believer, but yet my dad didn't live the lifestyle of a Christian. Um, I surely didn't live the lifestyle of a Christian. But you know that belief was always there. But I wasn't a follower. You know. Okay. And so you, so where'd the God project come out of then? Oh, that, that's interesting because the God project is nothing to do with God. It's actually by John Saul, who's like Stephen King. It's okay. a horror film oh. thriller. So it's just, what I'm talking about is just the title. Isn't that interesting? The first book I option is called The God Project. Yes. Well, let me tell you something. I'm the God project because <laughs> I was a project, you know? And uh, one thing led to the other. I actually borrowed my sister's American Express card. And I had an ego and a confidence in me back at that age that was unbearable to even be around. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I would imagine you you would have to have that if you're if you have the gall to go to Hollywood and say I'm going to be a producer. Yeah, and, and I, I don't snuck through any. the gates because of my last name. I actually had this whole plan concocted to sneak through the gates using my. See, my last name's big in Hollywood, Koch, because mm. Howard Koch, big producer, Casablanca, just. Legendary. Okay. And I actually snuck the gates and I was his grandson there. It's, it's, and that's a whole other story <laughs> that people can listen to. Again, all the listeners, pre Christian days. <laughs> actually, and as I look at it, I'm like, what was I thinking? But I ended up getting in there and, and I had, had a target, um, this guy named Bob Ramey and Mace Newfeld. And they, Bob Ramey at that time was the president at the Academy Awards. And uh, he did Patriot Games, Hunt for Red October. Uh, Mace Newfeld did the Omen. These guys are big. Newfeld yeah. Ramey, and but I read about Bob Ramey on an airplane. He was from Cleveland, Ohio, and he started out as an usher. And I read this really um, endearing story that what a great humble guy he was. I said, if I can get to this guy, I know I can get a movie made. Snuck to the gates, got into his office. He was there. He said, talk to his assistant. Sit down. Bob's got time for you. Now at that time. And again, I had an ego, but it happened so quickly and boom, boom, boom. I walked into his office. You see all these movie posters everywhere mm -hmm. and the big Academy Awards thing. And I, my mouth was so dry. It's like I needed a, a fork to pull the, the tongue off through my mouth. I didn't know what I was going to say, what I was going to do. Flash forward. Um, once again, it's a longer testimony. I end up getting a deal at Paramount, a first look deal. And I end up through another fate story, buying the rights to Lost in Space. And, you know, Hollywood has these these timings. And if you look at Hollywood, um, all of a sudden there's this slew of Westerns. Everybody's doing a Western, you know, one of my favorite movies is, is, is uh, tombstone. I love it. Oh yeah. But, but then, right. you know, right after that, Kevin Costa came out with why her, right. And then, the, so then it's science fiction. Everybody yeah. wants a science. It's fiction. a copycat business, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. Give me an action film. Give me this, give me that. So my timing being in Hollywood in 1992, that trend at the time, was everybody was doing remakes of old TV series. I mean, from the Brady Bunch, Lassie, you know, Batman started that, that trend. And then every studio is like, oh, we need a remake, we need a remake. And, and I'll tell you, there's another miracle because all the studios own all those old TV series. So for an independent producer coming in and go, I'm going to go make Lost in Space. This doesn't happen. 20th Century Fox, who did the TV series, would obviously own the rights to the licensing. Mm. Well, that wasn't the case. Um, Irwin Allen, who was mad at Hollywood because they canceled Lost in Space after only three seasons, remember in 63, 64, 65, he said, I'm never going to give the rights to him. Well, when I, when I got my deal at Paramount in 1992, Irwin Allen just passed away three or four months before I got there. And I actually looked up in the phone book the widow and called the window, widow on the phone. And said, mm -hmm. Of course, now I'm using names, you know. Hey, this is Mark Cook from Paramount Pictures. <laughs> and Bob Ramey's partner, Mace Newfeld. And she's like, oh, how's Mace doing? I know, I'm in. I convinced her to have breakfast with me. We sat there for breakfast. And we'll end this Hollywood excursion on this note because I'll never forget it. And I said, Mrs. Allen, I want to buy the rights to Lost in Space and make it a movie. It's, I, I remember running home. I used to run home from school you know, to watch this movie when I was younger. She said, oh, no, Irwin would never do that. And he, was, he said nobody would ever make a motion picture. And I said, well, who owns the rights to it? She goes, well, the estate does. Well, who own, who's the executive of the estate? Well, I am. 
So in other words, 20th Century Fox didn't own it. Nobody owned it. Uh-huh. The estate did. And you're sitting down with the and, person who... Right. Yeah. So I took my shot. And I remember my son, Blake, who's the NASCAR driver. He's 38 now. Okay. He was like 10. And I took a picture out of my, my wall. I said, see this right here? This is my son. He's 10 years old. Your husband was a stubborn man. God rest his soul. But now you, you're in control. Okay. And, and Mrs. Allen, out of all due respect, you're robbing this future generation of great movie content. Mm-hmm. And for the first time in my life, Josh, I shut up. Okay? I can't. <laughs> I can't occasionally shut up. And I learned that in the car sales. You know, don't talk. I'm gonna get there. You know, I, yeah, yeah, I went, <laughs> I'll oh, learn from you. I went uh, like this, and she goes, "Oh well, yeah, maybe you're right." Wow. Next thing you see is all over the Hollywood Reporter, the Daily Variety. Prelude gets lost rights. Lost in space. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it was legendary. They fell into my hand. Then, of course, we had, I, because I own the rights, new company, we had a bidding war between New Line Cinema and 20th Century Fox. And New Line Cinema, um, young new president, Michael DeLuca, who's like 26, youngest president, um, they were sitting there. They said, Here's $90 million. Go make your movie. Mm-hmm. I'm like, What? And then what? my whole life changed. From that point on, don't forget, I borrowed my sister's America's press card. Yeah. You know, so from that point on, my whole life changed and not for the good. Mm-hmm. What, what year did that movie come out? It came out in 1998, April 1998. 1998, around the Titanic time. Because That's right. I remember when that movie came out. And there are certain movies like that where uh, it seems it's a no-brainer. Of yeah. course, there'd be a Lost in Space movie, right? right? But what you're saying is, no, it was. It took yeah. some uh, yeah. some finagling to get to. Well, well, you said Titanic. It's interesting because my goal and my, my earthly flesh dream was to have a number one movie, a box office hit. And... Uh, April 1998, when Lost in Space came out, it knocked Titanic out of first. It's ah. a, so now it's like big ship, okay, sinks spaceship and all this stuff. <laughs> spaceship and, sinks. Yeah, spaceship. Thank big you. Ship, yes. Please correct me because I say a lot of wrong things. Uh, yeah, spaceship sinks big ship. Yeah. And Lost in Space set a box office record for the highest April opening ever. Um, and And now you can only imagine at that particular time, okay, that I was separated from my wife, okay? Um, again, I told you I had an eagle the size of Manhattan. I was dabbling in drugs. I made a lot of money, okay? My wife and I were living in a 7,000-square-foot house. We had the Jaguar, the Porsche, the Range Rover. It's like, what do I drive today, okay? And it was chasing that dream, chasing that dream, and it came true. It came true. It, it happened. Like, wow, look what I did. Yeah. You know, look, what, look what I did. Then, just out of fate, Black Dog, a, a, a stupid truck movie, <laughs> okay, um, it, th- with Patrick Swayze, Meatloaf, and Randy Travis came out a week later. And it, that was just fake because Lost in Space took, we had nine sound stages. We built 600,000 square feet of, sp- uh, of set in London. And Black Dog was just blow up a bunch of trucks in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. They came out two weeks apart. That did good. So I had two in the top 10 at the same oh, time. Man. But here's the key. Here's the key. You could probably barely fit your head through the room, oh, was, through the door, right? I, but I still <laughs> thought I was a nice guy because I give my wife everything and I'm giving her this. I'm giving her everything but what? The thing she needs most, my time, my loyalty, and 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 and, and just my, my, my love, you know? Mm. And it was always her fault, the reason the marriage wasn't working. So at that time, Josh, we were separated. Um, and I'll never forget this because this is kind of the end of the story and, and, and how God got a hold of my heart. So I, all my worldly dreams came true. I did it. Okay, um, I had everything the the a man could think that he wants in in worldly success. However, I was losing everything. My wife was all alone with two babies in that big seven thousand square foot house. Yeah. I was living somewhere else, going crazy, partying like a madman. And I'll never forget it. I was driving down in Palm Beach, Okeechobee Boulevard, and I'm going to date back a little bit. shows my age. Back then, we didn't have all those digital things. They used to have to get the marquees at like AMC where those long poles with suction cups. Mm-hmm. You with me? Oh, yeah. And they put the letters on. Yeah. I remember driving down Okeechobee Boulevard. I'll never forget it. And, and there was a guy out there, and Lost in Space was on the top, and Black Dog was right underneath it. So there are two out there. Okay, and I think I've been up for a couple of days at this point. Okay, just partying. Yeah, and and celebrating my success. Okay, and I remember him taking it down the L. Boom! I remember pulling over, watching. They're pulling that down. 
I went back to where I was staying. I remember going onto the beach, and I was sitting there, and the presence of God was so thick on me. It wasn't even about it was it, it was just a divine um, inter, in, intervention. It was it was just it was incredible. I remember sitting there. It's the first time I ever really felt the Holy Spirit speak to me in my thoughts. And over and over my thoughts, I'll never forget saying, look at you. You're lost in space. Hmm. Okay? You're losing everything. How's it feel now? You got the money in the bank, you got the cars, you got the house. How's your marriage? How's this? And, and I just sat there and I weeped. I remember weeping. Because the emptiness and the hole inside me was so deep. Because all my worldly dreams came true. I had everything that I dreamed I would want at that time. Mm -hmm. Yet I was emptier then than I was when I was chasing it. See, the chase is the fun, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so it was just incredible. It's like, look at your loss in space. And a series of events came. Somebody came to where I was staying. Christian brother, he's in the book. You hear me? I call him Dean. And he showed up. And it was a friend of my, my wife's best friend's husband. Didn't even know me. He said, I'm tired of waking up every morning at 3 o'clock in the morning. I got to do it. Do you believe in God? I said, well, of course I believe in God. I'm Catholic. Okay? <laughs> Don't forget, I just had this experience of something telling me. Now, I'm not thinking it's God at that time. Look at you. You're lost in space. Yeah. How you doing You now? know something's going on, but you can't really put I, your the, finger the on emotions it. emotions were. The Holy I'm Spirit is, yeah. Bawling, you know. And... Uh, he said, you believe in God? Of course. I, I graduated from Gabriel Richard. You know, I'm, I'm Catholic. Well, you're losing everything, and your wife's amazing, and you're big shot, and this and that. He handed me a Bible. He said, I'm going to church. I invite you to church tomorrow. Okay? I'll take a pause. Let me ask questions. So I said, I'll go. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that was um, an incredible transformation, incredible experience. That'll bring us up. But so that's kind of the whole story in the background with film and can, can I just dreams. like jump in? Because I think I always encourage people, you never know what work the Holy Spirit is doing on a person in their heart and their story, what's taking place in their life. And I'm thinking of this friend, Dean, who makes this comment to you, who throws the Bible, at you, let's go to church and let's do that. What A lot of times we put too much pressure on ourselves to think, well, I'm afraid to say something because... Right. They might get, reject Amen. me, yeah. they yeah. might whatever. And yeah. and I don't, Dean probably didn't know that you had this experience on the beach. I mean, for all he knows, no, you're, no, you got this yeah. success yeah. as a Hollywood producer, and you're, you, in your mind, hey, I got everything going great, you yeah. know. And I don't want to, like, put words in your mouth, but, you know, divorce in Hollywood is not uncommon. Oh, it's, it, and so it's, it's it's the norm. It's the norm, you know? and so so for him to say that, and then you would say, "Yeah, I mean, because the Holy Spirit had already been working on you." Yeah. And I, I just I'm wanted to tell. Yeah, people, it was all within a third, like a thirty six hour period. And his his comment was, "I'm tired of waking up every night with this burden to come give this to you." Oh, so, that's, so that's it awesome. Was, it was like I don't really care too much about you, but I want to let you know I got to release myself from God telling me go give this guy a Bible, go save, go save his marriage. Mm. You know. It, 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 because I'm sure his wife was at home saying, Stephanie's so sweet, and Mark hasn't come home for three days before, and he's left, and he's out front doing this mm -hmm. and that and that. And it, it riled him up, and he's a very successful guy in Palm Beach at the time, too. So, um, you know, there was a reason. God knows exactly what he's doing when he's getting us. It's, it's just we we, we got to come to that point. Um and he's been after me a few times in the past, but you just don't listen. Mm -hmm. But this was like, you know, God has such a unique plan for each and every one of us that when we really decide to follow that God tap, I call him, and they come. And when they come, they're strong. Mm -hmm. And they usually come that he'll bring you way down. So it gets real interesting after I got saved, because I'll tell you, that's a lot of people probably going to be really. I was going to say, was there a moment then when you just, all that came together and you just cried out to Jesus and said, hey... I'm okay. yours. So here we go. Uh -huh. Here's the transformation. Okay. <laughs> so the next day. I'll get my water ready. Okay? Here we go. Yeah. So the next day, okay, <laughs> I show up at church. And, you know, I love talking on these podcasts. Again, thanks for having me because it just reconfirms to me what an awesome God we serve. Mm -hmm. And not only that, what a divine destiny he has for each and every one of us. And if I just would have listened earlier. You know, if I just sat still and gave him my first hour and spent time with him, made him first in my life, I could have saved a lot of years, but 
his plans are. Hopefully, I can share with other people who are listening and save them a lot, a lot of trouble. Yeah. Okay. So, end up showing up to church, and I, as I look back, it's so staged because, as I told you, my father passed away when I was 26. He was 51. He had his first heart attack oh, at wow. 40. End up having an eight artery bypass at 42. Passed away. He was the most amazing, loving, amazing dad. I was spoiled rotten. Okay. Provider for us. He had a wild streak to him, you know, drinking and chasing women and stuff, you know. Um, but but a great heart, great heart. And, you know, they say a man never becomes his own man or a real man until he loses his father. Mm. Because I tell people, I promise you that if my dad was alive when Lost in Space came out, there would have been never any drugs involved. And it's, he would have flew to Hollywood and pulled me out of there and put a whooping on me <laughs> and then hugged me. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Uh-huh. I only got spanked a couple times, or I wouldn't say spanked, you know, knocked down a couple times and then just loved me and I deserved it. So I didn't have anybody to hold me accountable. So I show up in the church. I'm going to give Christ Fellowship in Palm Beach a, a plug here. It's Pastor Thomas Mullins. I've been there. Big, big dude. Football coach. Reminds me of my dad. I was there a couple years ago and Uh, met him. Okay. Reminds me of my Uh dad. Oh, boy, I put him through heck, you know? (laughs) I got a lot of stories with with good... As a matter of fact, my... My um, youngest son's middle name's named after him, Thomas. That's where I got saved. Mm. So walk into the church. Now, don't forget, and, and I'll tell you, I'm going to get into a little bit more. Demons are real. Oh, they yeah. just are. Yeah. And not, not too many people want to talk about demons are real. And I'm reading Mark right now, and it's like 13 different times in the first nine chapters. It's about he casted out this demon, and a woman with the demon came, and this and that. Mm-hmm. They're real. So what make us think that they're still not around? Yeah. And me, I was full of them because of the lifestyle I was dabbling in. Yeah. Okay. But I God the, had a I bigger I think the purpose. devil loves that to go, yeah, we're not around. Oh. Yeah, we're not. Oh, it's no. all fake. No. So I walked into the church. I remember sitting up right up towards the front. Dean was there, of course. I remember my wife was like four down. I'm like, oh, boy. Okay. And again, <laughs> I had such a stronghold of pride and a demon of pride. Okay. That pride, 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 that the song came out, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you. And Josh, it's like I had a, not a golf ball, I had a softball in my oh, throat. Man. I thought I was going to die in church. It was, like, mm-hmm. it was so intense. I wanted to bawl my eyes out, but the pride was so big. I remember grabbing a tissue and pretending I'm itching my eyes. My wife is there. And then Pastor Tom comes out. Now, of course... I didn't know this till a while back later, but he knew I was coming because Dean walked in there and said, listen, we got this big shot Hollywood producer coming. He's losing everything. He thinks he's all that. Okay? Uh-huh. His wife is amazing. It's he's a got, trap. Oh, yeah. His <laughs> wife is amazing. He's got two young kids. He's losing everything. Uh-huh. And Pastor Tom, I got this. So he comes out. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm nervous. And he starts preaching on things. And he says, and if you think you can continue to live in perpetual sin without consequences, you're wrong. There's consequences to sin. Mm -hmm. And he points right at me. He goes, and you get a grip (laughs) and stared at me. Really? Oh, just like this. And you get a grip. And I went like... That was the release of it. It was Did like my go, dad. Yeah. Did you I go can, like this where you're like looking behind? Like, uh, uh, no, I, I was right at me. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Father. Yes. <laughs> and so the ser- sermon was amazing. At the end, you get to go up and they had the altar call. And this is where it happened. I went up there, knees shaking. I fell down on my knees. The pressure, the sin in my life was so, so, so thick. And I remember sitting up there saying, Father, I'm a sinner. Cleanse me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. Wash me clean. Lord, I give you my life. And here's the thing I said. Mold me. Change me. Transform me. Make me the man you want me to be, Lord. Mm. I give you my life. And I really meant it. And I'm bawling. And then my wife comes up and we're hugging. And it's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like whew, the release and the cleansing and, and for listeners that aren't completely radically saved and cleansed, that still have some sin in there that they haven't repented for, get rid of it. Wash yourself. And we'll talk about in the book, wash yourself with the precious blood. Mm-hmm. He gives us the, the opportunity to become clean every day. Mm-hmm. And you know, as you continue to wash yourself, you don't have to wash yourself as much. You're not as dirty. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. You know, that first washing was mad ticket. They had to take a fire hose to me out in the parking lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So in the in conversion like this, and not a conversion, but yeah. you know what I mean, like a transformation yeah. like this, um, you're 
you're still living in Hollywood, or at this point now you've you've moved away from there because you're, you're talking about Florida and West Palm Beach. I'm back and forth. I've always commuted. Yeah. I flew a million miles in 18 months. I flew home every single weekend, every weekend, and I had two lives. Two Porsches, one here, one there. Two clothes, just took a briefcase. I flew home every weekend to see my son, Blake. He's from my first marriage. Okay. I was only married six or seven months. And, and by the way, Blake's mom, still to this day, my one of my best friends, my wife's best friends. We're, we're partners in parenting. And um, But because I always wanted, I was always, a, I can always say I was a great dad. And I, why was I a great dad? Because I had a great dad. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the problem when we talk about more of this dad. And as a matter of fact, one of the acronyms that I told you about, the, the DNA, I got like seven of them, man. Okay? Mm-hmm. One was dad. And it's interesting, Pastor, that when the Holy Spirit speaks to me, it's always 3.15, 3, 3.34 o'clock in the morning. Something like, Lord, how about seven or 5.55 when I'm in the devotion? Yeah. Because, man, I, I hate getting woke up, but it's like, dad. Dad, like, okay, what are you doing? I actually have a Holy Spirit board, I call it. And I always write these little three-letter acronyms downwards. And uh, I'm a dad. What are you trying to tell me here, Lord? Dad, okay, tell your brothers and mother's sons they need to be a great dad. And what does dad stand for? Doing above duty. And it clearly, these are the things Mark Cook doesn't think of. Clearly in my mindset, there's three types of dads, Okay. Dad, drunk and disorderly, plenty of those. Mm-hmm. The second one, okay, distracted and disengaged. Dad, distracted and disengaged. And a lot of Christian men fall into that. Mm-hmm. They think they're being a great dad. They almost use it like a badge of honor. Yeah. Distracted and disengaged. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm taking, providing for my family. Amen. That's yeah. right. No doubt. And then there's the one that we should all strive to be, doing above duty. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I even t- I had a little incident with my son Blake where he was coming home. He started a new business, and he was in between driving, you know, for NASCAR. He started a, a big business, Filter Time, with the, with the front, with the actually Dale Earnhardt Jr. They started a business together. Not a bad partner to have, and that's a that's a pretty cool story. And on the testament, I don't know if you saw that Promise Keepers video they did of me. Mm-hmm. It's on my website. It shows my son, yeah, and then my grandson. And it kind of shows you if you heal the man, he can heal the family. The family can heal the nation at work. Because Blake, Blake says, man, if God didn't get hold of my dad, I'd probably be a NASCAR driver. But it wouldn't have been for uh, God speaks, you with me? And mm-hmm. I am second in compassion and natural. Probably wouldn't for Jack Daniels and Hooters. Uh-huh. Okay, because yeah. we follow our dads. So now I'm the kind of dad because of the way my dad raised me. So it was important for me to be there every single weekend, Yeah, you know? Um, and so... That's where I kind of got a little distracted. So lead me into something yeah, after so, I gave my life to Christ. Okay, so let's go here. So now you've given your life to Christ, yep. okay? And this book that you have here in this devotion, the first yep. hour that we're holding now, and you're you're on this this mission to get this book to as many men as you yep. possibly can yep. to really get them to devote their lives and really change their daily habit, really what we're talking about, so that the first thing they do is wake up and spend that first hour with God. And what this book really does is, is kind of gives you a little bit of an outline of here's some things you can do of how to spend time in God's word, right? right? Yep. And and there's really the three things that you, you talk about in this book, which is basically to wake up and you're going to, we'll get, let's get into this in a second okay, about yeah, how yeah. the whole 555 thing yeah. happened and uh, to wake up basically and spend in that first hour, uh, 30 minutes in prayer. And then to spend 30 minutes in God's word yep. and then also use that as a time of refreshing, right? Yes. And so let's, let's do that because now, we, now we've got your story in the background here. When does this, because you, you later wrote this out, this, be, this was really what God gave for you on a personal level. And 100%. then you had people say, hey, you need to like make this available for other people. Yeah. So let's go there. 2005. Think about it. Wow. So here's the part. This is where the part gets good. So gave my life to Christ. My wife and I walk out. I move back in the house. Okay. The the thank you, Jesus, relief. Everything's good. And I remember Pastor Mullen saying, there's a thousand angels up there rejoicing every time somebody gives their life to Christ. You know, the relief and the cleansing was so supernaturally amazing. I was so filled with joys and the past is gone. I really felt at that time. My past, I've been forgiven, mm-hmm. okay? So now what happens, what he didn't tell me, 
And a lot of pastors don't give the enemy a lot of stage time. Let's be honest. They don't. What he didn't tell me is that there's also an adversary known as Satan, and he's down there with a big board table with seven of his principals down there saying, boys, we got a problem. Mm. Cookie, that was my nickname, just gave his life to Jesus. Get him. Mm-hmm. And like, there's a new enemy on the table. 100. percent Okay. Uh-huh. So I didn't know about spiritual warfare or anything else, and that's that's how this book came about. So what happens is this, and it's interesting, just because like in in Mark and a lot of the Gospels, where you're throwing seeds around. Okay. So the first seed going down get plucked right right off the way because there's no roots, and mm-hmm. that, that that's what the enemy want would want to happen to me. So within three months of giving my life to Christ, okay. As I look back at it, I thought it was the enemy and the enemy attacks. We lost everything, everything. We went from a 7,000-square-foot house to three of the highest-end cars you can think of to an 800-square-foot apartment, three months, and getting all the cars repossessed. And my, my father-in-law gave me a, a 2000, a 1995 Explorer with 350,000 miles on it with torn seats. Mm. You know, And I was looking back, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, this happened. And I look back now. When I sat there, and, and for the listeners out there, when you truly meet it and you say, Lord, use me, mold me, change me, make me the man you want me to be. Well, as I look back now, it wasn't the enemy at all. We'll get into the enemy's tactics, but he's harmless on that. It was the Holy Spirit plow coming in and saying he meant it. He had to come in there and plow all the weeds out of my life. And as I look back, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Because let me tell you, that 700-square-foot apartment was more of a home than that 7,000-square-foot house ever was. Mm. I never wanted to go home. And my wife surely didn't want me to go home. It was a possession. It was an ego. Look at my house. We became family. We, we reunited. But I was in a struggle. I was, I was a baby Christian. I didn't, I didn't have any—I I didn't know what to do. You know, and so I'd be good. We go to church every Sunday. Church yeah. was great, and then by Thursday, oh, I was going to have one vodka tonic, you know, and then it would lead to other things, and I'd fall. The difference was when I fell into sin with 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 booze and drugs. Okay, even as a brand new Christian, the conviction was there, mm-hmm. where I never felt guilt before. I was a professional liar. Oh, I, I missed my plane. I can't come home. Psh. Everybody, okay, I'll be home Thursday instead. Like, hey, party. No conviction, nothing. Now when I found the sin, it's like the conviction was the strong. Like, Lord, yeah. I'm sorry. Cleanse me. And, you know, mold me. But here's what happened. Over a period of years from 1998, the book came out in 2005, okay? Mm-hmm. Up, down, up, down. But here's what I noticed. There's consequence to sin. Each time I would fall, it'd be like the next day I'd get grounded, Things would be going good. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a job. You know, money was tight. We were rolling quarters for food at the time. You know, the big shot. I was humble for sure. And then when things are getting really good, I'll celebrate. I'll just have one drink, right? Boom, falling to sin. Next day, fell apart, this and that. I got grounded. Mm. And then I'd be good for six months. It's like, wow, man, they're going to be naming streets after me. Watch <laughs> out for the pride. That little stronghold was still in there. Falling to sin, wham. But I realized that each time that I slipped up, the grounding was longer. And I could just see God saying to me, Mark, you're doing so good. I took the keys for six months. Now I got to take them for a year. The point was I got tired of getting grounded. So here's what happened. And this is what I really want to talk about. I'm crying out to God. I'm up, down, up, down. But at least the lengths are getting longer. Mm-hmm. It wasn't sinning once a week and then repenting yeah. in church. Well, what you know? you're talking about to me at just a biblical level for everyone is basically, you know, when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior and we repent and we turn our lives over to Him, right? That change, we become a new creation in an instant. Amen. Okay? But the transformation... It's a process of all time. I mean, it's right. really, you know, people just think, oh, I'm just, I mean, there are some who have that story where, boom, hey, I never had a problem again. And then there's others who go, no, like, this is a process yeah. that, that Jesus is walking me through. So I yeah. love what you're saying. Yeah, the sanctification was brutal on me. It yeah. was brutal. And, and I'll tell you, God supernaturally again, the, the second time, the first time I heard the Holy Spirit really speaking to me was when I was at that beach saying, look at you, you're lost in space. Okay, that was a God moment, Mm -hmm. you know? And the second time that the Holy Spirit really spoke to me was I was in such struggling with the battle up, 
down, up, down, being good. I just wanted to be good. I wanted to be a great husband. I didn't want to drink. I didn't want to do drugs, you know. And the, the, the enemy was, listen, the enemy can influence us. A lot of people say, well, you're a Christian. You don't have demons. I agree. There's, I have no demons there. But it's the influence. Watch what you watch. Mm-hmm. Watch what you're triggered into. More than a stare, more than a glance. You know what I mean? So those enemy attacks come at you in the forms of sight, vision, influence, decisions, mm-hmm. depression, anxiety, feeling anxious. And the battle was so strong. Was up, down, up, down. I remember praying again. I said, Lord, why the battle? And like in Paul, why do I do the things I don't want to do and do the things that, you know, it, it, the scripture I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yeah, 100%. Right? I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. And I'm just getting angry about it. And I'm saying, Lord, help me. Just help me be obedient to your will. I'm tired of letting you down. I was more convicted of letting him down even than my family or wife. So I, I know the Holy Spirit was at mm-hmm. work there, you know. Help me. Well, that next morning, 5.55 a.m., and in, in order to read the story, hear the story, you have to get the book. Because what's neat again is there's nine pages how God woke me up every morning at 555. Then the rest is a checkoff list to get yeah. you through the real book. You know? Yeah. And, and Mark, for those listening, lists off of several different things where the, the, the numbers 555 just become kind five, of five, constant. Five, 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 know, five, undeniable, right? Uh, undeniable. So, and then when you find out what 555 means, yes. and mm-hmm. it happened through Dean again, the same yeah. guy. And we're not giving that away. No, you we gotta, can't. You got to get the book for can't. that. So I wake up at 555 a.m., boom. And back then, it's 2005, we had the alarm clocks, you know, the digital green ones. Uh-huh. Like it said 555. Five, five. I'm kind of going like that. I'm going 555. Five. Boom. Holy Spirit, over and over in my head, the thoughts. Get up. Give me your first hour. Give me 30 minutes of prayer and 30 minutes of reading my word. Get up. Now, why would Mark Cook, of all things, that's when you know it's, see, I, I didn't write no devotional. First of all, I surely didn't write the Bible, you know? <laughs> this is something that I did because I followed the Holy Spirit, never had any intentions of printing books. Over, I tried to go back to sleep. Over my, get up, give me your first hour, 30 minutes of prayer, 30 minutes of reading your word. I want you to tithe your time. Because at that point, I was an avid tither, even though I was not as wealthy as I once was. I really believe in tithing. You know, mm-hmm. and the first fruits are very important. And he's like, I want you to tithe your time. And it kind of hit me saying, man, if it's so important to God that we're supposed to tithe the first fruits of our income and stuff, mm-hmm. it's probably, I don't know, I can only assume being a dad and he's my father, yeah. probably just as important that we give him the first fruits of our time. Mm-hmm. You know? It's 100%. I had, I had another guy on the, on the show uh, several episodes ago, his name is Del Wright, and he, he has an organization called Band of Brothers, which is a men, men's ministry. And his thing is, he's like, listen, man, love is spelled T-I-M-E. That's it. Yeah. Like, we, we often think love is spelled through, you know, giving gifts or whatever. Oh, you're right. People on. have that. Spot but on. time, that's, he, that's one on. of his main points. He's like, your kids, your wife, all that stuff. And men, men lose sight of that first. We think love is spelled in all these other things. Gifts. In gifts. Yeah. And G-I-F-T. Right? Provi- providing and th- whatever. Why can't you be happy? I did this for you. When no, man, it's time. You yeah. know? And the same thing goes with our relationship with the Lord. Amen. Time. Yeah. It's incredible the, the stuff that happens. So I how I started this book. I tried to go back to sleep three, four times over and over my mind, get up. I remember walking up the steps thinking 30 minutes of prayer. And that, that's how you know it's the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. I'm a baby Christian. 30 minutes of prayer? Yeah. You I know? don't talk for 30 straight minutes. I mean, how can I, what am I going to pray for for 30 minutes? Know. You know? <laughs> and 30 minutes of reading a word, I can do that. It's interesting because I walked upstairs being obedient. And I was just led by the Holy Spirit because, because God knew my heart. And he knew the enemy was, was, was in attacking me. He knew mm-hmm. I was under attack. Okay. And walk upstairs, and my desk is about the size of this, maybe even bigger. And I usually have scripts all over the place. And it's a mess. Okay. It's, it's a mess. It was, it was wiped out. It was clean. It was cleaned off. I went, <gasps> like, my wife decided to put everything over on the credence part. There was one book sitting on the desk. One book. Prayers That Avail Much by Jermaine Copeland. Mm-hmm. I have that book. And I opened it. I go, 30 minutes of prayer. And I opened it up. And I looked. And it was to Stephanie. Happy birthday. A friend just gave her this book for the birthday. Mm. Well, I guess my wife thought maybe I could use it more than her. So she probably put it on my desk. Yeah. I went, wow. 
I started looking at the prayers in this book, and I'm thinking, there's 247 prayers. The book's pretty thick. I said, okay. I grabbed a little chart, wrote it down. You know, that little chart looks just kind of like this. Mm -hmm. And this whole book was done right then. This is important. And I said, okay, I'm just going to go through and see which one of these prayers kind of think just randomly. Mm -hmm. And the prayers were in perfect order. Well, lo and behold, at the end of 30 minutes, I looked. It's like, boom, done. There was 18 prayers. And those are the 18 prayers, the topics that are in this book. Mm -hmm. And they were all over the place, Pastor. The first prayer, okay, was wash yourself, ask for forgiveness, and wash yourself with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, repentance. The second prayer was armor up, put on the full armor of God. The third prayer was a refilling of the Holy Spirit. Then it goes the fourth, fifth, sixth, and then... So here's the cool thing. The first prayer, wash yourself with the Holy Spirit, was on page like 120. So I took these little sticky notes and said, okay, I'm going to do these these 18 prayers in the same order. I put one, two, three. So I had these sticky notes all over the place. Mm -hmm. About the second week, now every single morning, and my wife is my witness, boom, I'd wake up, 555. Boom. And I started hearing all this stuff. Domino's pizzas. Well, five pizzas, only 555. <laughs> Weiss's plates. This. I was like, I get it. But every single morning, God woke me up at the same time. By the end of two weeks, okay, I started adding things. I said, okay, there's seven simple steps in here. These are steps that God led me to do. Isn't it funny? Seven is the number of completion. Yeah, right? yeah, right. First one was, okay, wake up time, same time every morning, okay? Morning prayers, 30 minutes. Bible reading, 30 minutes. And so after I did the 18 prayers, I go, reading the Bible, what am I going to read for 30 minutes? I got my New Testament, which I never went through. Mm -hmm. I looked at it, mine's the NIV, and there was 240 pages, right? So I said, 240 divided by 30, that's only eight pages a day. That's only four pages of the New Testament, front and back. Mm -hmm. I've read the whole New Testament in 30 mm -hmm. days. I can do that. So I did that. I had time left over. It only took me 20 minutes. I said, well, the book of Proverbs I'll do next. There's 30 Proverbs. Hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. Shows you I didn't write a devotion. There's yeah. 30 Proverbs. I didn't find out there's 31, 31 Proverbs until I'm done day three. I go, oh, there's 31. <laughs> yeah. But what happened was then they come, I had to work out. Okay. Step number five, return home at the same time. Step number six, time with children, 30 minutes in bedtime prayer. Step seven, which has been transformational, time with wife, one hour. No cell phones, no nothing. Shut up and listen. And you can know that's a really tough for me to do, okay? And bedtime prayer. And then I was going to memorize the Ten Commandments. There's a story about that as well. So I started doing this. Every morning he woke me up. By week two, I'm like, I'm filled with holy. Brother, you can't put the first, you can't, you can't each morning repent, mm -hmm. put the armor on and refill it. I really want to touch on that. But what I want to tell you is this. After two weeks, so he said to my wife, What's different about Mark? I mean, he's still crazy like the robot in Lost in Space. He's still all over the place, <laughs> uh, you know? Danger. But there's something different about him. Uh -huh. He's still hyper, but he, he's not, he's got a lot of energy, but he's, there's something. She goes, well, he's getting up every single morning at 555. It's pretty crazy, guys. It's like, like and he's, he's giving his, uh, his, his morning, his first hour to God. Every friend say, can he write that down? Because I'd sure like to give one to Jack. Mm -hmm. Hey, me too. I need one for Jeff. How about me, John? Yeah. So my wife said, hey, everybody wants to know what you're doing. So my wife's actually the one that did the charts, okay? And by the end of the 30 days, I was miraculously changed. But I want to talk about this. It's really important to me. I think this is my strongest message. And, and as we know, I believe we all, have a, we all have a flesh DNA, but we also have a spiritual DNA, divine natural assignment. And I know, I know that I know. When you, there's a prayer in here, seeking God's will and perfect wisdom. And when you're praying every day, Lord, make all of my thoughts agreeable to your will, your plans, your promise. When you're really seeking it, there's a confirmation. And my, my assignment is to expose the enemy. A lot of people don't want to hear that in churches. And, and, and tell my brothers out there, okay, um, three keys, three keys to unlock powerful, effective prayer, okay? Three keys. And they're in this book. And, and, and the Holy Spirit wrote this book, not me. I'm just the, the C student knucklehead, put them down. Because the first three prayers spell out another acumen, war, okay? Mm -hmm. Wash, armor, refill. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know this until 10 years later going, 
hey, that's interesting, war. And this is what's important to me. These first three prayers, especially for the listeners, if you don't do anything else in this book but do the first three prayers, it's going to change your life because there's plenty of Scripture. Now, a lot of pastors argue with me. Yeah, that's Old Testament Isaiah where it says, it's because of your sins and iniquities that I have turned my head away and will not hear, will not listen, cannot hear. Well, Old Testament. You know, I, I, I could combat that one because it's sure working for me. Yeah. Because when yeah. there's sin, I believe sin blockers, there's sin in your life and unforgiveness in your life, pray all you want. Mm-hmm. It clearly states in Scripture. Yeah. Those oh, yeah. two sin blockers. So what happens <clears throat> is these three prayers, and I'm going to go through one. The first prayer, wash yourself with the precious blood of Jesus Christ each day. And the prayer's powerful. And I haven't missed a day. In, in, in 15 years, not a day. My foot doesn't hit the bedroom floor without those first three prayers. I say, Father, I know, Father, just... And there's certain days, Pastor, I'm thinking like, I don't know what they asked to forgive for. I was pretty good yesterday, okay? But I'll even say, I still want a fresh cleanse. I say, Lord, Heavenly Father, forgive me for the sin of, if there is sin, I ask, I ask yeah. to repent for it. And I, I physically wash myself. I wash myself with your blood, the top of my head, bottom of my feet. And now I'll say, Father, forgive me for the sin of the Lord. I don't even know, but I'm sure there's something in there that I did wrong yesterday or oh, last yeah. night. Or so, Father, cleanse me from anything that I might, I might not even be aware of. Wash me with your yeah. precious blood. Make says, me new. Yeah. Cleanse me. So now think yeah. about the first prayer being W. Now, not only are we righteous through Jesus Christ, but at that time in the morning, we're sinless. There's power. There's power. Mm-hmm. You know, you feel it. Second prayer. The newness of a day. I'm telling you, it's like, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Fresh. He gives us a fresh start over and over and over. When we're really seeking like mm-hmm. that and tithing our time. Now, the second one. Yeah, not keep, keep that thought. Because, you know, the Psalms talk about that all the time. The newness of a day, the oh. freshness of a day, oh. the rising of the sun, all and, of those and things. And when there's sin in there, unrepented sin, mm-hmm. you're not the same. Mm-hmm. We got joy. I call, I call the enemy Junior because he's a joy robber. And I, I, can, I can honestly tell you, there is nothing that's going to rob me of my joy. Yeah. He's tried to use my kids. If one of my kids is depressed or one of them did that, did that. Now I know the source. Mm-hmm. I know the source. He wants to rob. The enemy comes to kill, destroy. He's a thief. Okay? Mm-hmm. He, and the biggest thing he wants to do is rob you of your joy, the depression, the anxiety thing. And we're going to get to this next one. I, if you don't mind, I'm no, do rip it. on Let's this go. one. Because yeah. this, this is the whole reason I'll I'm here. i just sit back. Let me get my, hey, let me get my water. Hey, this is the whole reason I'm here. All right, do it. War. Wash yourself with the precious Jesus, blood of Jesus Christ. Second prayer, armor up. And I always say, armor up or get slaughtered. Okay? The prayer in this book, for put on the full, think about this for a minute. Ephesians 6.11, for put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand up to everything. In my mind, it says, which means if you don't put the armor of God on, you won't be able to stand up. Now, that might be just something as simple as anxiety, depression, but just, and he's an antagonist. Yeah. Like in a movie, he's an antagonist, okay? So put on the full armor of God. I want the listeners to know this, that we are in a true spiritual battle. The world is a mess. We could do a whole podcast on this. Mm-hmm. The enemy is in full blitz mode. The Israel thing, going, it's all biblical. It's everywhere. The enemy is in full blitz mode, destroying. He is out there. And if my brothers, and that's that's why we want to give away a million books. If I can get a million men praying each day, even these first three prayers, mm-hmm. but got their battle gear on. Would we go, if there's actual battle, would we go into a football game, like last night's Super Bowl and stuff, without a helmet on? Without... I'm telling you, there is a war for the soul of this country, this world. And guys, there's the armor of God will protect you. So I even put four helmets on. So let me go through these. I just want to let you know, the enemy is real. Demons are real, okay? The good news is when we're in our battle gear, we're, we're going to get attacked. We got, we got all the, wep- the, the, the defense weapons we need. But we know who wins. At the end. Mm-hmm. There's a, it's, it's, we're in a battle. So here's what I do. So the first one is, Heavenly Father, I put on the belt of truth. Mm. Okay? I know that Satan cannot stand against the bold use of truth. And I say, Lord, help me to live truly, speak truly, and deal truly in all that I say and do. And help mm-hmm. me keep the word of truth on me. Secondly, I put on the breastplate of righteousness. I know that Satan must retreat before the righteousness of God. Satan, you must retreat. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I put it on. Third, I put on the boots of peace, and I claim the peace of God through justification. I receive the peace of God that touches my emotions and feelings through praying sanctification. Yeah. Okay? Lord, make just fill me with peace. Let me also be at peace with others. Okay? Perfect peace with others. Yeah. I switch these because the helmet's not supposed to be next. But I figure, how am I going to put hold the breastplate up and put a helmet on? <laughs> so the fourth one I put in, Heavenly Father, and this is the key one for me that's been miraculous. Heavenly Father, I know that my mind okay, is the number one target of Satan's lying, cheating, lustful, deceptive, joy-robbing, anxiety-filled ways. I cover my mind with the power of a helmet of salvation. I put a second helmet on, a third and fourth in each hip, mm-hmm. Okay. Make all of my thoughts agreeable to your will, okay, your plans, your purpose, Lord. Protect my thoughts, Lord. I lift up the shield of faith. I keep the faith against all the blazing missiles that I know Satan's going to try and fire at me today. I know that you, Jesus, are my shield. And lastly, and this is key, I lift up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I choose to live in his truth and in his power, enable me to yield this sword well, to push Satan back, to defeat him. And Lord, help me keep all this armor well oiled with prayer. All this I ask in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, my Savior. The Word, memorize the scriptures. Remember, the, you know, when Jesus was 40 days out in the wilderness, how did he defend myself? It is written. Mm-hmm. It is written. That's his sword. The enemy hates the Word as you know it. But the helmet, the mind, there's a battle for your mind. There's a battle for your thoughts. It's mm-hmm. joy robber. And lastly... After I'm done armoring up, and I'm, I, I put it on physically, <laughs> ready, Pastor. Man. I put I it on physically, man. I'm, I, I say, Heavenly Father, says in your word, how much more will you give your Holy Spirit than it always ask you? I ask you now in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus for a fresh refilling of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Mm. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a triple anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Now think about this. When I'm, those are three keys. You're, you're fully repented, washed. You got your battle gear on, man, okay? Mm-hmm. And, you, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're unstoppable. There's yeah. nothing that's going to steal your joy. It, it, because you, it, God makes it so aware of the source. I had some issues with a couple of my kids lately. So I, go, I know the source. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm to wait before I talk to my kids on this one 24 hours so I can just cool down a little bit because I know the source. It's not going to steal my joy. So that's, the, that's what I'm really all about. And then in this book, God laid in my heart, it's a mission. If you heal the man, he will heal his family. The family can heal the nation. We're losing this country, Pastor. Mm. So we've given out to date over 400,000 books. I was on the Huckabee show. And it's like, and, and it's always great to have Huckabee go, it's a great book. It's what the nation needs. I guess it's free. Great Father's Day present. Go to the first hour. Get, com, get your free book. It almost blew my server up. It was like 17,000 books, which turned into more. But here's the thing. If you heal the man... It's in the mission statement there. He can heal his family. The family can heal the nation. Okay? Mm-hmm. How do we heal the man? We get men back to a daily relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Okay? And, 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 and cleanse this. How do we heal the family? We become a bad. We do above duty. We become a great husband, a loyal husband. Uh, I, I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that one. Time. How do yeah. we show love? Time, time, time. And third, we're going to power up the entire first hour army, and we're going to make them make a solid commitment to vote in every single election from the county school boards to the national election. And what we say in here is our war is not against flesh and blood or against principalities and partners or against Democrats and Republicans. There's bad everywhere. Vote for the candidates that share the same, do your research. Yeah. Vote for the candidates that share the same godly principles and believe in the constitution mm-hmm. this country's founded on and vote for them. Let's get out. We can't blame her though. Let's get out them. So we want to storm the polls and vote also yeah. on that. Yeah, and, and it, really what you're talking about here is when you start first by directing your attention, spending time with the Lord in prayer, spending time in God's Word, and then that relationship with yourself, all of these things and the natural outflowing that comes from that Amen. is when you'll see it. So now you're not just listening to any talking head that's, that's going right. to tell you what that's to right. do. You're getting your truth from God's that's Word right. and making your decisions Amen. there. Amen. That's what it is. Yeah, and not getting angry. And Right. You can get, you know, you. here's another one. Be careful what you put in your head before you go to bed. It's going to go deep while you go to sleep. You can't sit there and watch Fox News or CNN for 45 minutes before you go to bed and think you're going to have a yeah. great night's sleep. And have a night and of peace. Full, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know, right? It's like, I like to watch the news for a couple minutes. To, I, I like to be updated. But then after that, I'm getting in the Word. I'm listening yeah. to some praise in Michigan. Because you know what? It's it, Here's the thing. 
The enemy, it's clear. I hope I've made it clear. He's real. And God actually gave him a name, the Prince of the Air. Mm. Okay? Oh, yeah. What is the air? What you and I are doing. Internet. Think about the movies, media. The, right. That's why my attacks are so heavy, because the enemy knew. Yeah. It's like, man, this guy could... We've been doing teachings do on damage. Revelation and the end times here at the church, and, and so okay. the Prince of the Air has very much been something we've been talking about recently. And, you know, when you were talking about the putting on the full armor of God, what's so cool about that is, you know, when you put on the armor of God, here's one thing for, for sure that's going to be happening. It's going to be put to use. <laughs> okay, you well, don't you, you don't put that on like like it's a seatbelt in the car, and you go. Oh, I hope this never gets put into use today, Great and word. it probably won't. Great word in a seatbelt, but but all that other stuff that you're talking about, every single aspect of it. What you're going to hear? What's that sound? Oh, that's that's the flaming arrows bouncing off the shield of faith. What what's going on here? What what's holding me up? Well, it's the belt of truth. Alan Clark, who's a friend of I, ours, I love it because that's how Alan, I met him. He's got the book. He's got his book fitted. Love it. One of my favorite things Alan writes about the belt of truth. He's like, you look at that like it's a little belt you buy at Walmart. It's not. It's a championship belt that you put around your waist Amen. in victory. Amen. That's holding you up. That's the belt of truth. I was like, Alan. That's a good word. I love his book. I learned a, a ton because yeah. God gives me basics. I'm, I'm the kind. And, and again, my mandate is to get this in the hands of a million men and put them through a 30-day boot camp. Because I was actually troubled before by a pastor. I've had so many miracles. There's so many testimony of marriages restored. So many miracles. Mm-hmm. Miracles. And people call like, what do I do next after the 30 days? I'm like, I, I, just keep giving your yeah. first hour to God. Christian. So I know that my burden is to, it's clear now, it's clear, get a million men, put them through boot camp, and God's going to bring other soldiers, yeah. other warriors, like Alan, yeah. and that book to go out to train them further, because we talked yeah. earlier about it, I'm not a pastor. Right. Well, Mark, what your what this book is doing, when you said before, it's Holy Spirit inspired, it, and it's this book is not saying, hey, follow Mark's guidance. Oh, yeah. This, please don't. What this book does <laughs> yeah, is it don't. says... Here's a roadmap to get you deeper into God's word and spend time in relationship and Amen. prayer with the Lord. That's right. This book isn't saying, hey, listen to my wisdom. It's sending you to the wisdom. Yeah. And you've seen it. There's nothing in there I even say other than telling my story that guess what? Yeah. If this these if this structure, which is really tithing your time in a structured way, it's very simple as we know. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can change Mark Cook and truly change. I'm changed. I'm a changed man. Yeah. My wife will tell you, anybody will tell you. Because I finally got the key to his mouth. A fear of the Lord mm-hmm. is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, I'm scared to death of my dad up there. <laughs> I know, man. I'm telling you, uh-huh. I could do a whole podcast on you. And then I did this and that. It was the next day. I got this happening. It is like he sees everything we do. So it's finally going to, when there's a calling on your life, especially a kingdom calling, mm-hmm. okay, then you're really need to be held accountable on certain things. And, and you know, the enemy doesn't want a million men to get this book. He doesn't want to spend time with God. So you, can, I'm kind of sure, good thing, you can rest assured, guys, and you're listening, I've been crushed with spiritual battles. Not no more. Mm-hmm. Not no more. I know where I'm going. I'm still learning each more. The Holy Spirit loves just, to, and now I'm just basking. I just want to learn more of the word, learn more of the yeah. word, learn more. I of love the word. it. Every time I read, I get, I get it. That's what my heart is too. And, and even uh, what I've been talking about a whole lot on this is, is, is trying to give more people just a roadmap. But so many people who ask, I want to read the Bible more. Where do I even start? What do I, and just to, people are looking for, just, just give me those steps. Give me yeah. the different things. And that's what, that's yeah. what this it's 30 is. 30 days, man. You know what? Yeah, hey, I here's what I was going to say, man, I'm going really, really long. I can talk. I, I told you I can talk. I can talk. Well, has anyone hey, told you? Good, yeah. Go here's, ahead, go here's, ahead. here's the good news. The good news is your son, which is an amazing young man. I can just see the Holy Spirit all over him. He's got all this amazing equipment. It's beautiful. He's going to have his job. Make sure he edit it's out at least 20 minutes worth because we've, <laughs> we've gone over an hour. So this is going to be a great... He's talking about my boy Jordan over here who's the Jordan, Jordan, produ- yeah, Jordan production guy. This could be a great thing. I, we're gonna, I'm going to see a rough cut when you're done because there's a lot you can cut out. No, I can we, go and go and go, but we we're getting it all. Nothing. But we're getting it all, Yeah, you know? And I'll tell you, Pastor, um, yeah, every day is such a blessing. And, you know, today is a day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad. In yeah. Don't let nothing steal your joy. I love it. Nothing. Has anyone told you you're a passionate guy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I told you before, they said, you should be a pastor at church. I go, Woo! not, hey. Tell you what. I said, an angel or or Jesus, my Savior himself, would have to show up because mm. I pray for you pastors. It's, it's a, you, you guys are out there, man. 
We, well, you're I awful. thank you for your and prayers. you're gonna get criticized. I'm sure. Yeah. it must be nice to be a pastor and have nobody ever say anything critical. Of you. Well, I have not had anybody be very critical lately. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a lie. All right, but, well, first hour, get a book. The first hour, get get the book. I'll tell you. You know what I would do? I would sell you Lost in Space if I had the rights to it too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> because there you I go. feel like it's gonna be in good hands. Yeah. So, there you go. Anyway, final word. What do you got to say as you head out of here? Uh, what I gotta say out of there is. There is so many men really living in a lie out there that are even in your church, mm-hmm. everywhere. And I just know. I just know. And and it's, it's it can change. The, the, the enemy's got strongholds, strongholds. I'm not saying demons on your church members or, and all the church members. They're strongholds. They're living lies with the lust, with, with certain things around the internet and everything else. And I promise you. That when you put God first in your life and you tithe your time, I yeah. promise you, yeah. te- test him on this, you know, that that the peace that you will experience, okay, the anxiety, the depression, the stress, the things that are killing us in this world right now, I promise you, they won't bother you like it is right now. Those are enemy attacks, depression, anxiety, thoughts. When you, here's the bottom line, obedience equals blessings, disobedience equals discipline. I got tired of getting grounded. So guys out there, get the book. It's a process. Yeah. And I would yeah. say to the guys listening right now or or anyone watching right now, here's here's the truth of the matter is you might be sitting there thinking, I can't overcome this. And you'd be right. You can overcome Amen. it. But with Jesus, you can. And what Mark's talking about here is basically giving you a roadmap to dive into the word and to dive into a relationship with Jesus yeah. to get that victory that you're not going to get unless you just turn it over to Jesus Amen. completely. And so that's where you're talking. That's what you're talking about. Seek ye it'll first affect the your marriage. God. It'll affect your yeah. children. Oh. It'll affect every aspect of your life that yeah. if you're out there listening right now and you think this is all getting destroyed, well, you know what? Maybe it's time yeah. to give it over to Christ. Amen. Oh, I've just surrendered. I, I can do only one thing if I try to control my life. Screw it up. Yeah. That's just, just yeah. you know, so well, well, thanks for having me, brother. This was awesome. And I'm just super excited about this. And first hour, where can people go and get the first hour book? Go to the first hour.com. It is available on Amazon too. And I still understand why there's like 90 or hundred books that are bought on Amazon. Cause it's 1495. Cause it was, it's distributed like the Barnes and Noble stuff. But That's, if they go to the first hour.com, it's free. Just pay actual shipping. Huh? Just pay the shipping and go get the yeah, book. That's right. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, thank you so oh, much, Mark. I want to say one more thing. If there's any churches out there like yourself, I've got this mandate. We have 150,000 books that are sitting right now on the ground I just got a blessing. 25,000 are going to the Diamond Dex Stadium. There's three or four super churches that do the Easter service there. Okay. We're sending 25,000 books. Everybody's getting one. So look out, Arizona. How cool is We're that? We're getting the men up. Any yeah. other churches, including you, yourself, and stuff, we, my, my, my commitment is to give any church a book for every man in their church, and I'll even pay the, the shipping to get them to the church. So they could be in Texas, whatever, whatever. You're local. It's easy. I just, get, get, I just get a U-Haul truck. We'll oh, just drop them off. Let's okay? do it. Yeah. Let's so do it. So that's the other thing. I just, I need help in distributing these books because we're, the, the time is, is we need it. All right. Well, let me pray for you right now. Amen. Okay. Lord Jesus, we just come to you right now. We lift up Mark and we just thank you for this, uh, this, this plan that you've just Thank planted you. on his heart, Lord, and that, uh, and really this mission to get this book into the hands of men and uh, to begin to see a healing of them, a healing of the, their families, a healing of this nation. And Lord, you are going to produce some amazing fruit. Your spirit you. is at work. Thank you for Mark's passion that you have planted inside of him. And Lord, nothing but good things and good fruit is Thank coming you, from Jesus. it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank can, you, brother. Can, can I say cut? Cut. Cut, Jordan. Woo. Cut. I'll tell you okay. what. I want an hour, and that's a long <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. We're going to, I'm going to, let me bring us to a close here, okay? Oh. Hold on. So oh, my gosh. We're, we're, we're still editing. going, man. More he, editing. He's just having fun. Because I, I didn't tell Mark before that we don't edit this, man. This is just long form fun. Good. Good. Okay. okay. So, anyway, special thanks to you, Mark Cook, who uh, wrote the book, The First Hour. Go get it at thefirsthour.com. Yep. Amen. Firsthour.com and get this. And thank you so much. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone about this. And they got to listen to this episode because it's, I'm telling you, man, we we didn't have enough coffee, I, I think, before <laughs> this thing. This was, this was great. So, we'll see you next week on the Josh Heisman podcast. <laughs>